We will begin. Actually, it's wonderful to be here and just be able to connect with everyone. So let us pray. begin with an opening prayer. As we breathe in this moment, we relish the vibrancy of life. We welcome everyone everywhere as we prepare ourselves for this next hour, opening our hearts and minds to the music, the message, the synergy of being in the presence of people who share our desires to know ourselves and to know God. We affirm today brings us just what we desire, be it inspiration, hope, new insights, inner joy, our connectedness and freedom. We welcome diversity of thought and experiences as we celebrate our unity of spirits. It is a good day. Amen. 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 So now we're hearing from Maria. Sandy, did you have another song before we go into the call to worship? No. Okay. So I'm going to assist Sandy in singing the call to worship song. I invite all of you to stand if that feels comfortable for you and join us because there's like a little dance interlude, I guess. There is in the recording. <laughs> change my life if you ask me who i am i am wisdom i am light i am more than meets the eye i cannot be defined i am the thinker who thinks the thoughts that changes things that shape my life i am the thinker who thinks the thoughts i have the power to change my life I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts that changes things that shape my life. I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts I have the power to change my life. If you ask me what I'm at, I am beauty, I am joy, I am more than meets the eye, I cannot be changes things that shape my life i am the thinker who thinks the thought i have the power to change my life i am the thinker who thinks the thoughts the changes things that shape my life i am the thinker who thinks the thoughts i have the power to change my life i can choose to be the light the bright in someone's darkest night I'm so much more than meets the eye I cannot be defined I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts The changes things that shape my life I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts I have the power to change my life I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts the changes things that shape my life I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts I have the power to change my life I have the power to change my life I have the power to change my life Woo! Okay, you took out the dance interlude <laughs> I was prepared to dance Ellie Cha-cha-cha I always want to say that after that song. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome home. I'm going to ask you all to repeat after me. If you're watching us virtually, just type this into the comments. Everyone, look around at your neighbor. Repeat after me. Good morning. Good morning. I love you this morning. I love you this morning. And I sure do appreciate your being here. And I sure do appreciate your being here. You guys are getting really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> to our virtual church family, please know we're saying that to you as well. 
Help us grow this loving community by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to our pages. All right, let's do the affirmations. Join me in reading these affirmations together. I am willing to be led by God in all I think, say, and do. I will live as the light of the world. And being a prayer chaplain, I know somebody wrote those for this month. Who was that? Charlotte. Good job. All right. So let's do our unity principles. Join me in affirming. That was the words. <laughs> Unity's five foundational principles. Don't have those. Okay, I'll be glad to read them. There is only one ultimate, ultimate power, power in the universe. universe. That, that power, power is God, God, and its nature is absolute, absolute unchanging good. good. Human beings were, were created, created from absolute, absolute good, and so our inherent nature is also good. We call the inherent goodness of human beings the Christ. Our thoughts are our creative power. Whatever we persistently focus our thoughts and feelings upon manifests in our lives. Prayer and meditation are essential elements of the spiritual life because they focus our thoughts on our oneness with God and all creation. And it is not enough to know the truth. We must put that truth into action in our lives. We must live the truth we know. And I feel good. I'm standing in those shoes today, by the way. Okay, there we go. <laughs> we had a class with Wall, and he talked about you know, if you want things different or act differently, change your shoes, right? <laughs> so I'm changing my shoes into those words today. All right. Let's do the youth blessing. Will the youth stand up, please? All right. And if we'll hold our hands up. <clears throat> we love you. We appreciate you. And we honor the Christ within you. Go have a great class. Good morning. I'm, I am the prayer chaplain today. I would be happy to pray with anyone after the service. We have three rooms here to do that, as well as anyone else on the chaplain team, such as Ellie, Charlotte, Jody. Maybe more. I think maybe just that's us today. Uh, if you'd like to be included in the prayer request, certainly the prayer box is here. You can leave a request before or after the service at any time, as well as on the website. There is a button that says prayer request. I believe Nana, sh no, we don't. Well, Nana is here, so we, we appreciate Nana for being an honorary prayer chaplain. Normally she would carry the box up, but I see the box is here, so she's already. Right, thank you. thank you. Well, that's what happens when you only come once a month. You, don't, you mess something. Uh, all right, so prayer is our time of refocusing on truth, releasing our resistance, and it's even more powerful when we pray as a group, aligning our hearts and minds with a central vision and intention. And in the midst of the seeming chaos today, the wars, the crime surges, the worldwide border invasions, the attacks on farmers, the government censorship, the media propaganda, neighbors being told to distrust and perhaps even hate people who have different opinions. Let us pray now, releasing all those concerns, all concerns of the world. And let us focus instead on a higher truth, that the power lies not with the governments but within ourselves. This is our time of awakening to love within, that accepts all, judges none, respects all beings no matter how different they may seem to be. We focus on being a conduit for love, for serving humanity, 
spreading the energy of love in every interaction, dispelling all prejudice through our very presence. We are willing to be guided by spirit in all things, to open our minds and hearts to higher perspectives, to finding the good and the God in every situation. And as we open to spirit, we find wisdom. We see through false promises. We see hidden forces that control the media, the patterns of life that point to truth. We recognize our triggers as our calls as calls for forgiveness and non-judgment. And by releasing them, we are purified. We allow everyone to choose freedom and awakening in their own timeline, to see how their hidden beliefs and thoughts and our consciousness creates reality, to lift the veil of illusion so that we see love and truth with clarity. Our faith in God energy inside is restored. We remain helpful, cheerful, supportive, claiming the 12 powers of unity reside in us and arise as needed in each day, in each situation. And our guiding question as we listen for answers on anything is, what would Jesus do? We trust fully that truth will be revealed. We also share our energy with those who made prayer requests to be public. Dylan Royo, Seth Henderson, Elspeth Robinson, Theo Royo, Jason Johnson, and Laurie Dishman. We claim and know that spirit is working with each one, guiding their path as they open to new understanding. As they and we ask for, all that we, they and we ask for is forgiven as we allow it. We align our energy centers, both heart and mind, trusting that truth will be revealed to us trusting the body to heal, focusing on our desire, and envisioning that as if it is already here, with clarity that shapes, creates our future. We visualize now the white light of compassion and surrounding their homes, their bodies, everywhere they go, healing, balancing, renewing. As we affirm and know that wherever we are, God is, and all is well. We continue in meditation, aware of the deep stillness within. Each breath relaxing, deepening. Fully present, repeat the mantra, I am love. I am Christ expressed. And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes. Now it's time for Ellie, are you coming? Oh, you want me to do that part? <laughs> oh, okay, that's easy. Here is Sandy Hemingway, our famous musician, who we always love to hear. He's been here many times over the years, and he had a birthday August 1st, just if you want to say something to him. Well, thank you. Um, so that the I Am the Thinker song was written by Sue K. Riley, and she's a friend of mine and one of the originators of the Posse Music, Posse music Movement. And, um, and this is another song by uh, one of my Posse music friends, uh, Susie Hulcher. It's called Allowing. It's all about allowing. Allowing. 
allowing peace within an absolute surrender so serenity begins for when the storm subsided and calm becomes the way it's all about allowing it to stay it's all about allowing allowing love to flow setting down your burden and just simply letting go for as you cease the struggle and love pours through your heart, it's all about allowing it to start. Now feel it warm and shining, new with promise, strong undying love, different from any you have known. change to show living in the moment like it's all you've ever known and though it won't be easy you can truly see you try for it's all about allowing it inside to hold this yeah so without an introduction <laughs> my name is Rev Pat Venema I'm an old friend of yours if you're new to unity in Greensboro uh, you might not know that but um, boy it started in 2011 and when I was an intern while I was still in seminary under Catherine and uh, I've been coming back at least once a year ever since um, I remember I was here <laughs> I am too. It feels like home. I live in Chapel Hill, and um, so this is close, and it's a second home for me. Um, I uh, Last time I was with you, I talked about how I was letting go of my apartment, and I was on my way to Mexico for a month, and then I went to New Jersey for a month and did minister stuff, 
and both places. And then um, since then, less minister stuff and more dog sitting, which is sort of a ministry, especially for the dog owners who are so glad to have somebody stay in their house with their dogs. And it's been a thrill. I let go of my apartment and I'm floating around and they're actually paying me so that I can have some shelter. It's really wonderful. Uh, so yeah, and I never knew I would be a dog sitter, and here I am, um, loving it and teaching classes still on the online. So today I'd like to talk with you about um, our thoughts, and it's really aligned with our five unity principles uh, that for us to spend a little time with thoughts and our thinking. Um, and I did have slides, but it's too late to put them in on Sunday morning, and I didn't realize that. It used to be okay, and now that you've changed your software, it's not easy enough to do that. So I'll be using my phone to look at my slides, and I wish they were up here, um, but I'll slow down when I read the quote and help it sink in, okay? So, so where'd that... Where'd you get that idea from? Is a question to ask yourself, not someone else. Okay? You might ask in your mind, where did they get that idea from? But that's not the point today. Where did I get that idea from is the question. So I want you to think about, have you ever noticed your thoughts? Just be an observer of what's going on in that computer of your head. Sometimes I can catch myself saying something, you know, it's some voice, like there's a committee up there uh, of judges who are saying, why did you think you could do that? You're not good enough to do that. Did you ever get one of those thoughts? Or maybe, I, I, I'm going to fail. Or maybe it's a worry thought, like, I'm so tired, maybe I'm sick, and um, I used to be able to do this, now I'm so old. This is from my perspective, of course. Uh, but, you know, it might be, can't you see that you don't fit into that group? All these little thoughts that come in, the self-deprecating garbage in our minds. Where does that stuff come from? Because you know, as you've learned in unity, we know that we're the very essence of God. We're pure, perfect beings, at least when we come into the world. Have you ever held a baby and seen the baby's eyes, even if it's not yours? The magic of connecting with those big, wide open eyes. You feel like you're looking at an angel. And you are. They're pure energy. They've not been clouded by all the influences that they will get yet. So you and I have been clouded by influences, haven't we? And maybe we think they're good influences. And maybe we think they're influences we'd rather not have been influenced by. Our parents and how they raised us, an angry voice gets stuck in your head. Our teachers, some not so kind, who have said, I often hear people say, my music teacher told me I can't sing, so I've never sang since. You know, there's that clouded thought that gets ingrained into our subconscious. We're pure, perfect beings and yet we get influenced by society. Bullies on the playground or the bus. You have any memories of that? You have any memories of not being able to run as fast as your friends and therefore you think, I'm not athletic. And boom, you get this decision in your head that you're not or you're not good enough or you're not worthy enough. We all get those thoughts. And that's the, ne that's the negative life that we live, in a way. It's like we have this God's essence in us, but then we receive all this other stuff, 
And it changes who we think we are. Love that you chose. I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts. Thank you. And it changes my life as I take in those thoughts. Did you know, and I'm here to tell you, you don't have to believe everything you think. You don't have to believe everything you think. Your thoughts can be inaccurate. The real reality of you is that very essence of God. And yet we forget that throughout our lives. We have to keep remembering it, keep remembering it, so that when we have these negative thoughts, we do something about it, can change that thought. So I did have some slides, as I said. But they're not posted. So I'm going to read the quotes a little more um, slowly than normal, because they're not going to sink in. This vast subconscious that we have collects all this stuff. And we pull it out like a library whenever we need, whenever something triggers us to let the negative stuff come up. You don't have to think that way. Our thoughts are limit our potential. Linda Martella Woodset says in her book, How to Pray Without Talking to God, we determine our experience moment by moment, thought by thought. We determine our experience moment by moment, thought by thought. We decide what is possible and what is not. Mostly we do this unconsciously through a well-developed habit of thought that over time solidifies into belief. Beliefs are just thoughts that you've decided are true. Beliefs are thoughts that you've decided are true. And she says, unconscious though they may be, our beliefs about what is possible and what is not limit our expectations. I have a belief about myself. The belief is a thought that I've solidified. And it limits my expectations about myself and others. If I have a belief about you, I limit my expectations about you. We can think about that in terms of community like this when you're working with others. If you believe that they're not smart enough to do the job, it's going to limit your expectation of them. If you believe you're not good enough to do the job, it's going to limit your expectation. You're going to constantly refer back to I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm not good enough. I'm not as good as the rest of these people. <sighs> Think about that. Think about all the things we harbor that are limiting ourselves and limiting our idea of others. Proverbs 23, or 4, verse 23. I love this paraphrase from Good News Translation. Be careful how you think your life is shaped by your thoughts. Wow. The verse was more like um, hold fast to your heart, for that is where life flows from. And I, I never really got any juice out of that one. But when I see the paraphrase from Good News, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Woo! A unity person wrote that one in Proverbs. Um, Philippians, you might know this one. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think on these things. It's telling us where is your mind going? Be an observer of that mind. Is it worthy of praise? Is it pure? Is it just? Is it honorable? Think on that. If it's not, release it. So how do we release? How do we? First of all, you've got to become an aware, aware of your thoughts. 
So catch yourself. I have an assignment for my metaphysics students during this next week. Watch your thoughts, your feelings, your senses, and your, what was the other one? Thoughts, feelings, uh, anyway, it'll come to me in 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> thoughts, feelings, what are you sensing? Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's enough. Notice them. Notice them. Become aware of your own thought processes. Catch that thought and say, where did that come from? That's why I took this line. You know, I, I can't do that. I'll fail. Where did that thought come from? It surely didn't come from my spiritual essence because my spiritual essence is you're able to do anything. Wow. So where did that come from? You don't have to answer that question unless you want to go into therapy. <laughs> and you can. I mean, it came from somewhere. I can't do that. I'll fail. It came from limiting thoughts. It came from maybe someone said, choose simple things, Pat. You can't do complicated things. Who knows where it came from? But the point is, you noticed it. That's the first step. Realize that that is a thought that doesn't have to become a belief, and it can be released. So my phone keeps going you know, quiet when I'm not looking at it. <laughs> Identify that li limiting belief. Identify the limiting belief. Look at what I just thought. That's not true of me. Boom, there you got an identifying point. Recognize it without judgment. So you're not going to say, oh, there you go again, you dummy. You're thinking that way again. No, that's judgment. Just say, oh, that's interesting. That's a thought. My friend the other day who is still recovering after a year from open heart surgery is feeling very tired right now. She's my walking friend. So we're walking really slowly, than, more slowly than we used to especially before the surgery, but since, she slowed down again. And then she says, oh, I'm so tired. Oh, my mother died when she was my age. And I said, that's just a thought. There we go. Check. We noticed the thought. We don't have to give it any power. OK. It is scary to think, my mother died at this age, and now I'm very tired. It's scary to think that. But realize that's just a thought. And when I said that to her as we were walking, she goes, oh, thank you. That's relief to hear somebody remind you, you don't have to give any credibility to that thought at all. Yes, that's true. Your mother died at this age. Check. It's just a thought. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about, constantly being aware of those thoughts. Catch them and say, nah. But don't judge. Don't Put yourself down for having that thought. I thought I'd be more enlightened than this by now, you know. <laughs> Just declare that it has no room in your thoughts, in your world, in your picture of yourself. Declare it and set it free. Unity calls this the action of denials. I like to use release statements or renunciation statements, like I renounce that thought. It's not a part of me. So you've, you've got this thing, I can't do that, I'll fail. Let's use that example. I had that, that uh, almost nine years ago when I started my online ministry. I thought, I, I have to do a website, I have to get PayPal, I have to get blah, blah, blah. I've never done this. I was a public school teacher before that. You know, I got my paycheck every month. Now I'm doing all this stuff to make myself known in the unity world to teach these classes. And I really heard, I can't do that. I'm going to fail. And I had to work with that. First noticed it with love, without judgment, and constantly remind myself that's a belief that I don't have to believe. Recognize the unreality of that. I can't do that. I'll fail. Well, who? Who's, who are you to say you're going to fail? Maybe every door will open like it did. Because I think it's because I had that vibrational level of, no, 
That thought is not my reality. You ask who said it, you say, I'm not entertaining that, even if you're part of my committee in my head. I'm not, it's just the empty ego words. It's ego words, it's words of ego, meaning ego always wants to be a shiny thing that everybody loves, <laughs> and or at least that's my uh, personality. And um, ego has a fear of trying new things because it might fail. And so you say to yourself, I release this thought. It has no power to define me. Emily Cady used to st wrote 100 years ago, and you think about when you're a housekeeper, sometimes little cobwebs come along on the edge of the ceiling, and you don't know where they came from, and you have to get them down. You don't go after them with a vengeance and get rid of those cobwebs. You just take your little broom and you flick at them off and collect it off the broom. You know, it's that simple. Emily Cady said, think of those thoughts as if you're just cleaning the cobwebs out of your house. Just, no, 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 you don't belong here. You don't belong here. Goodbye, go away. That's the, how to treat your thoughts. Just release them, gently say, no, no, no. This thought has no power to define me. I am, and you always follow your n n denial, your release, with an I am statement. Like, this thought about failing has no power to define me. I am capable. I can do this with the power of divine energy that, I, that is behind me. Follow it with a word of absolute truth. And as we saw in the, the words that were, um, I am beauty, I am light. You know, those are the I am statements that you can add to that. Like, I'm not pretty enough. No, that's not true. I am beauty, I am light. You know, it's deeper than just the surface appearance. So you put your hand up and say, no, no, no. This has no power to define me. Yes, it came from my head, but I release it. I disown it. I'm letting it go. But you have to be vigilant. Go back to that first step. I got to notice my thoughts. Got to notice my thoughts. I get, once in a while, I get worries. As I said, I'm floating. I like to use that word instead of homeless. I'm not homeless. I'm in a home every night. Um, I'm floating, and that can be worrisome. Like, will I get another gig? What happens with that week that's not booked yet? What am I going to do? Every time that comes up, I think, I've been supported all my life, and especially over this past year. I don't have to worry about that. I release that worry. I don't know what's going to happen as that week approaches. And it always fills up with something, even if it's just going camping on my own, which I love to do. In fact, a, f a month ago, I took a week and went camping at Joyce Kilmer Memorial Forest. If you don't know about that, and if you love nature, you've got to go. It's in the western part of North Carolina, west of Knoxville, Tennessee. You know, no North Carolina goes way out into the mountains, the Smokies. It's in the Smoky area. Smoky Mountain area, and it's a forest that has never been um, cut, never been harvested. These mostly tulip poplars are as big around as from me to the front of that table, or maybe even bigger, from me to the front of the table. You walk all the way around this big tree. They're just humongous. and. It's not been, um, and it's been preserved so that um, no humans do anything in this forest except to, if a tree falls down over a path, they cut it. And when you go past the tree that fell down, its diameter is from here to the floor. <laughs> it's huge. And there's beautiful moss, bright green moss, over every single log. And they're huge logs that are go for 100 feet. 
full of moss, and there's rhododendron or mountain laurel just all over the place, the water falling through, floating through. It's gorgeous. And I camped at a place that was next to a trout stream the night after a thunderstorm, and the trout stream was just roaring, just roaring. And, um, and there were butterflies all over the place at my campsite. I said, this is where I'm camping. And I sat there for three days with this roaring trout stream. I could hear nothing else that first day. Couldn't hear the birds, couldn't hear owls. It was so loud. And then it calmed down, and it was quieter. And I walked down and put my feet in the water. And <sighs> I realized when the day that it was a roaring river, I was thinking about this talk, because I've got to talk in a month. I've got to figure out what I'm going to say. And I realized as I sat there, my thoughts were empty. Because I guess of all that white noise that was happening, I heard nothing but the roar. And I was in nature. And my thoughts were quiet. I thought, this is something. I'm not, because I kept thinking, when I talked to them about Notice your thoughts. OK, I'm going to do that this week. I'm going to catch myself. I'm going to notice my thoughts. And every time I remembered to notice it, I thought, I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking. I was just being in with the rocks and the sun and the water. So that was cool. Do that once in a while. Joyce Kilmer, lovely place to be. Um, so, but that's rare. Usually our thoughts, in fact, we want to drown on our thoughts by turning on a video or TV or playing a video game so we stop thinking. And so it, it, it's, it, it's an important practice for us all to just quiet down, even while we're busy, quiet down and notice the thoughts, then release them gently. Nope, 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 not going to entertain that. I just want to share one more thing. and. Um, it was really helpful for me. When I started my ministry nine years ago, I did have all those thoughts. I thought, I just trained to be a minister, and I thought I'd be a church minister, and that didn't happen, and this didn't happen. It happened for a while, and then it didn't happen. And then it bounced to different interviews, and nothing sounded perfect for me. And so I started thinking about teaching online, thanks to Unity in Greensboro, who needed me to teach. And it was a winter when we couldn't get I couldn't get to Greensboro anyway long story short I found a quote of um, Butterworth that you know when when Eric Butterworth taught he always said you and he's talking to his audience so he said you but I changed it to I and the verse the the statement that I printed out and colored all around it with Sharpies and put on my wall above my computer screen to always remind myself this is it I am, there's the I am statement, I am strong, confident, and capable. That's something to even, that's, etch that into your mind instead of, I'm weak, I don't know what I'm doing, I can't do it. I'm strong, confident, and capable. I have the ability to do all that needs to be done. I am one with all sufficient substance. So I am secure and fearless. Yeah. If you want that quote, um, <coughs> grab my business card and I'll send it to you. I'll say it again. I am strong, confident, and capable. Let's say that together. I am strong, confident, and capable. Do you believe it? Keep saying it so you do. The next line. I have the ability to do all that needs to be done. I have the ability to do all that needs to be done. I am one with all sufficient substance. I am one with all sufficient substance. So I am secure and fearless. So I am secure and fearless. Do you feel the vibrational energy shift as you say that instead of the little self-deprecating stuff? Toss that out. It's trash. Put in this stuff instead. It changes your life. It helps you radiate that positivity, which is your truth, 
rather than oozing out your lack of confidence. You know, you want to present yourself not fake, authentically secure and fearless. So plant those thoughts in your head and you'll see your energy change, you'll see your relationships shift, you'll see yourself being more who you want to be just by shifting our thoughts. I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts that changes think that change my life. Yes, it changes your life. It does. I'm a witness to that of my own world and I know many of you as you're nodding know that too. Thank you for letting me share that. Namaste. We all know and love you. Thank you. It's interesting today how the, how the thing goes. And I don't really know it, but yet I wrote my offertory message on the think and the thoughts and what you said. Um, for those of you who know Mary Morrissey, her thing is notice what you notice. <laughs> and so that's, that's actually, you know, my clients, I always ask them to notice what you notice and, you know, take it from there. So that, that was great. That was great. Um, in noticing what you notice, what makes your heart drizzle? I, I feel like Snoop Dogg. What's this? What drizzle? What makes your heart drizzle? Like what makes it drip in delight? You know, what, what gives you value? You know, give to that. What, whatever that is for you. If it's, and I wrote down some words, what pleases you, commendable, what's honorable. I mean, you just spoke right, right to me today. It just wrote it right down. But whatever that is for you, honor that, please that, give to that, let your heart be lit. I know that when I give here, in whatever capacity it is, it just, whether I fall on my face or whether I give with joy or glee or when I am strong, confident, and capable, you know, give from there, it, it, makes a difference. It lights up my heart, even if it doesn't work. I say it doesn't work. See? It all works. Mm -hmm. It all works. So give from that. And we hope it's here. <laughs> or I'd say you wouldn't be sitting out there if you weren't getting anything. Right? So that's the short and sweet part of it today. So thank you what you uh, gave me today. Too bad. <laughs> all righty. So we are going to do, after the offertory, which I just gave, we're going to um, sing Thank You, God, for Everything and do, yeah, it's you, it's you, it's your cue. <laughs> and we're going to take up the collection is what we're, I'm trying to find the word that I was looking for. So you saw all the ways to give up here, uh, Venmo, Cash App, or not, I don't think Cash App's one of them, that's one of mine. Venmo, I'll, I'll give you my Cash App if you want to give to me, if I'm fitting <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, cash check, Venmo, and I think our uh, ushers are coming around her. I've already come around. Uh, text the word give to 61064. Uh, Easy Tithe app, blah, 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 blah. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> we struggle up here we're without flow. without we're Wally's. Uh, we're flowing. We're flowing. That's right. We're flo we flow. We uh, flow. Sometimes differently than what is intended um, when we don't have a script to go off of. <laughs> so, uh, whatever we're doing, are we doing the long or the short, Chris? The short. Join me in singing. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, God.
And does somebody do the offertory prayer over it? Me? Oh, okay. Together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. And so it is. All righty, now for the announcements. All ready today. First of all, we're going to let, um, or we're going to have Charlotte come up and talk about her class, course, event, whatever it is. Well, actually, I have two events this week. <laughs> so the Wednesday night uh, meditation service is going, this month is Will. And so those quotes that we said earlier that I had written were on Will. And so my meditation on Wednesday night is also going to be on Will. So I invite you to come for that. And also this weekend, I think it's this weekend, right? The 23rd, 24th? Yes. So this weekend we are going to have the class on the five principles. And this is what the book looks like. It's written by Ellen Devonport. And I encourage you to get this book. Even if you don't take the class, having this is like, it's just one that should be in your library and not just sit in the library, but get it out and read it. So the name of the course that I'm um, uh, going to be teaching this Friday evening and then all day on Saturday is called Breathing Life into Unity's Five Principles. So I'd like for y'all to say this with me. God is good or God is just God is. God is. I am. I am. I create. I pray. I pray. I act. I act. So that's what this course is all about. It's looking at those five principles in depth. And I also want to say that because we know that learning enriches our lives, but these classes can also be fun too. And so with me, you'll be exploring these five principles through music, dramatic readings, singing, art, role playing activities and meditation so we have a lot of fun in there and i invite you to uh, join and the sign up deadline is wednesday so please if you're planning to take let us know by wednesday and there is a charge of 70 dollars for the course please do not let that stand in your way if there's an issue with anyone for that amount just let me know and i and so it's this Friday at 6.30 to 9, Saturday, 9.30 to 4.30. And it's going to be in this room. And bring your own lunch. So I'll provide snacks, but bring your own lunch. And you register online at UIG website or the UIG Weekly Blast. So it will be coming e-blast. And like I said, the deadline is the Wednesday. And I think that's everything on that. Yeah, very good. It'll be really fun, and you just took my script. <laughs> It'll be really fun, and Charlotte does a good job, <laughs> but Ellie doesn't if she doesn't have a script. <laughs> All righty, and guess what today is? <laughs> kindness Project Day, along with being Sunday. And because it's Sunday, it's Kindness Project Day. Um, do we have a picture of the cuddle worm? Ta-da! Anybody recognize this cuddle worm? Nope, go back, please. Right there. Anybody rec Anybody do this one? Did you make that one, Pat? No, I, I accessorized it. You accessorized it. Wonderful. Well, this one was found. And we got back. Um, you know, we have a little card in there. And it asks questions. Where did you find it? And this person found it at the Tanger Family Bicentennial Garden. Anybody put it there? And whose heart will it touch? Daniel De La Rosa is who they wrote. So Daniel De La Rosa has this. Or it might be Daniel. No, let's spell Daniel. <clears throat> so they found this. It's going to touch his heart and keep it. And 
I love that they actually scan the, the Q, the, what do you call it, Q, Q code, QR code, and gave us that information. So I think it's fun to see who made it, who assessed their eyes at, you know, like who took it to Tanger, you know, to know that you're making a difference with all these people and all these things you do. So yay. And we're going to keep making more of them today. That's going to be an ongoing project for us all the time. And today we're going to start, and I meant to bring that up, we're going to start pumpkins. And we're going to have a fundraiser with these. So we're going to make these. And this beautiful Amy made this. We all hope ours look this good. <laughs> but different sizes, different sizes, different colors. Um, you can pick your colors if you want, coordinate with your home decor. Um, and so we're going to make a little fundraiser with that. But we need someone to still help with the cuddle worms in making them and putting them in the plastic bags along with the cards to get them ready. So you don't have to know how to crochet. Okay, that's the important part. And the, that. Yes, yes. Yeah, Charlotte, Charlotte's a good accessorizer. And Suki, yes. So please keep coming back because <laughs> we need you. Otherwise, there's three or four of us that at home frantically doing all this all the time. So, um, so thank you for that and your support. Uh, let's see, next thing. Oh, a reminder that the POC has invited us down today for their ice cream. They're having a little ice cream social after the service. It'll start around 11.45. So if you'd like to go down for some ice cream, please do. If you're a first-time visitor or haven't been here in a long time and have received a welcome packet, please fill that out and give it to an usher so that we may stay connected. UIG members are invited to join us for a meeting about our new home search after service on August 25th. So, you know, we're still in that conversation. <laughs> you know, we still have to be out of here in a few months. And so we need to find a loving place like this. Look, we attracted this. We manifested this space. Could say we kicked them out, but, you know, we did. <laughs> they, they were self-motivated in movie. Actually, they found a place before we did, but... Um, so there isn't any reason why we can't still have a beautiful space like this to exactly what we want. So please come to that meeting and give us some more input. All right, the UMAS, UMMAS fall retreat that takes place in Lake Juneau, Alaska in the mountains, September 17th through 20. There's a flyer in the hall. They've extended the registration for another week. So if you'd like to go to Umas, it is Umas, 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 Umas. Um, where you, it's, it's very fun. Lots of good, uh, Christy Snow from, you know, she's from Charlotte. She's playing. She's fabulous. And, of course, um, Eddie Watkins, Jr., who's coming here to do a concert, um, he's there. And lots of good speakers. All right. And speaking of Eddie Watkins Jr., he's going to be here for a concert. Yep, September. Tw I'm glad we're in sync. <laughs> September 21st. Um, right here downstairs in the sanctuary. $20 are the tickets. And it's 5 to 7. Does it say that? It says 5. 5 to 7 on that day. It's going to be a fun day. So tickets are on sale right now. So. Bring your neighbors, bring your friends, bring your relatives. I'm bringing two of my relatives from out of state. It's going to be fun. All right. And let our chaplains pray with you. Pardon me? The Penn family today? Yes. Um, they, the Penn family is having their 65th anniversary, and their party is today at the Cultural Center, right? Say that again. Jan Van Dyke Theater. But it's in the Cultural Center. Yes. 
right? Yeah, in the cultural center. Yeah, and that is from three to five today. They've invited us all. It'll be fun. I'm going. T tickets are twenty dollars. Well, they're fifteen and twenty. Depends on where you sit. <laughs> all righty, and then letting our chaplains pray. Uh, chaplains, raise your hand again. All right, find somebody and pray and all right. Now we're gonna have did I bore you or you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> More fabulous music by Sandy Hemingway. Thank you. And I want to thank um, Pat for a wonderful sermon. And I, I wanted to add those words because sometimes it can be a challenge to turn off the, all of those negative talk tapes in our heads. But one of the ways that I've found that it's very good at that is if you can't turn off the negative talk in your own head, turn on positive talk for those people around you. It's when you lift others up that will drown out those voices in your head. The song is a song I wrote a long time ago. It's called Every Step of the Way. from the old idea of I get to bless you, but we all get to bless each other. And I took this out of one of those verses that have to do with my talk, Philippians. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and with gratitude, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. And so it is. Thank you for letting me be here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Now, if you like, you can stand up, hold hands or not. We'll do the peace song. <laughs> 